Aloha Mai Kako, a Koma Maida Curtain Call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm playwright James Kimo Nevius, filling in again this week for Paul Janes Brown, who is still appearing in Something Rotten at Maui on stage in Wailuku. This week's review took me to Maui's west side, where Theater Theater Maui transformed the cafeteria at Lahaina Luna School into New York City and the year 1899 for their rollicking production of Disney's Newsies Jr. Now, I don't know if Paul picked me to do this review because my day job, well, well, one of my day jobs, is as a New York City historian, but I don't think he could have found someone on Maui as interested in and already heavily invested in this period in American history. This is the era of yellow journalism, when larger-than-life newspaper moguls like Joseph Pulitzer and William Randolph Hearst duked it out for media supremacy. The Gilded Age saw America's robber barons getting richer and richer while the working class stagnated. Sound familiar? This is just one of the many reasons why Theater Theater Maui, under the direction of Christy Scott, have picked the perfect piece for this summer's production. Newsies Jr., with a book by Harvey Firestein, lyrics by Jack Feldman, and tunes by Disney wunderkind Alan Menken, is adapted from their full-length musical Newsies, which won the Tony in 2012 for Best Original Score. Newsies the Stage Show is, in turn, based on the 1992 film of the same name, the one that starred a young Christian Bale, though a number of plot elements have been changed in the transfer from screen to stage. The story centers around a group of young men and women who sell newspapers, the Newsies of the title. Each morning, these kids buy their newspapers for one half cent apiece and sell them on the streets, being allowed to keep their meager profits. On Broadway, the children were all played by adults, but I have to say that the drama is much more effective with age-appropriate casting at Theater Theater Maui. In real life, children as young as six years old were newsies in New York City, often living in deplorable conditions. Seeing these young actors embody the rough-and-tumble world of late 19th century New York, with names like Crutchy, Button, Specks, and Pigtails, is all at once entertaining, but when you stop to think about it, also heartbreaking. The show opens with Jack, played by Sawyer Dunning Zekis, and Crutchy, played by Wyatt Scott, discussing Jack's desire to move out of New York and head west to Santa Fe. Sawyer Dunning Zekis is terrific as Jack, the de facto leader of the Newsies, and he surely has a bright theatrical career ahead of him. Meanwhile, Wyatt Scott's Crutchy, so-called because polio has left him reliant on a crutch, turns in a nuanced performance especially in his Act Two ballad, Letter from the Refuge. The scene then shifts to Newsies Square, which was a real location opposite City Hall in New York, where the Newsies would gather every morning to read the headlines that were put out on chalkboards in front of the newspaper office along Park Row. The more salacious the headline, the more newspapers the kids thought they could sell. But circulation is down, especially at Joseph Pulitzer's New York World, so the Pulitzer decides to raise the price of 100 papers from 50 cents to 60 cents. When the Newsies hear of the change, they decide to strike, led by Jack and newcomer Davey, played by Sebastian Navarro. Navarro and Huck McLeod, who plays his brother Les, bring a credible naivete to their performances, a naivete that quickly falls away when faced with the harsh realities of being a Newsie. Navarro, in particular, does a fine job with Davey's character arc, going from the shy kid who just wants to make a little money to support his family to the co-leader of the strike. Helping the Newsies is Catherine Plummer, played by Kelsey Rule, a reporter at the rival New York Sun, who wants to help Jack and the other Newsies, but is hiding a secret of her own. Rule closes out Act One with a beautifully sung ballad, Watch What Happens. She is definitely another talent worth watching, and someone whose name will surely appear in future editions of Curtain Call down the line. The entire ensemble was a joy to watch, but alas, I can't mention them all here in this short review. But a few other performances worth briefly noting. Rocco Dahl as Race, J. Lee Vieira as Meta, the proprietress of a theater on the Bowery that is Jack's refuge, Kyler Strona as Joseph Pulitzer, and Kaya Santerre as his long-suffering secretary, Hannah. In the same way that producing Newsies Jr. meant casting age-appropriate actors as the Newsies, 
It also gave the team at Theater Theater Maui the challenge of needing to cast kids as adults. I don't know who made the decision to lean into the comedy of such casting choices, but for example, pairing Kane Serna and Carlos Cota as Morris and Oscar Delancey, Joseph Pulitzer's heavies, was brilliant. Likewise, Kapahu Pasco as the snidely whiplash Schneider, who forever is trying to round up the newsies and get them into a reformatory called The Refuge, was another great choice, as was Kaleva Marcello as Governor Teddy Roosevelt. Now, why Roosevelt was dressed up in his safari outfit somewhat eluded me, but if it was a nod to arsenic and old lace, all I can say is bully. Huh, arsenic and old lace junior. Think about it, theater, theater, Maui. The entire production team deserves praise. The show was smartly directed by Ms. Scott, who moves the action along at a nimble pace and always has a strong sense of creating a striking stage picture. She and assistant director Francis Tawa clearly worked hard with these young actors to give them a sense of their character development, and you can see that work paying dividends on the stage. The choreography by Felicia Chernicki Wolf must have been a challenge, maneuvering so many dancers in such a relatively small space. But Ms. Chernicki Wolf does a fantastic job, from the rousing opener carrying the banner to some terrific work in Act Two, especially in King of New York and Brooklyn's Here. Musical director Vanya Jerome, working double duty here and as musical director of Something Rotten, coaxes some strong performances from these singers, both in the solos and in ensemble numbers. I especially liked Seize the Day, the opening number in Act Two. Ms. Jerome also designed the sound for the show. Sets and props were designed by Theater Theater Maui's board president, Annabelle Sinclair Delaney. The set, a simple New York skyline in tones of brown and black, with the Statue of Liberty peeking her head up on one side, was wonderfully conceived and executed. And the props, especially those stacks and stacks of newspapers hawked by the newsies, were first rate. The costumes by Mary Beth Chin were delightful, with so much attention to detail that warmed the heart of this New York City historian. Also, a special shout out to the stage manager, Victoria Navarro, and her assistant, Adam Karulgan, who kept the multiple moving parts of this production humming along. In closing, if I may for a moment change the name of this show from Curtain Call to Soapbox, I'd like to talk about our need for theater programs just like Theater Theater Maui. Too often, theater is treated as a luxury. It isn't, it's a necessity. Ever since Aeschylus put two actors and a chorus on stage in the fifth century BC, we've been using drama to make sense of the world around us. And the programs on Maui that are training our next generation of actors are a crucial part of keeping those experiences alive, and they need your support. So even if you didn't get a chance to see Newsies Jr., which closed on Sunday, please check out Theater Theater Maui at ttmwestmaui.org and find out how you can help these up-and-coming actors. Until next time, this is James Nevius. Ahui ho. Ahui ho.